So again, it looks like the YouTube boxing community has taken it upon themselves and taken a rumor and ran with it saying, hey, you know, um, contract submitted or offered. Uh, the fight that might be happening is, you know, David Benavides versus David Morrell at light like heavyweight. Well, Rick Lisa just reported that that's quite the opposite. And I'm going to let you know who he's fighting in a minute and i'm also going to play some video clips as i give some analysis on the situation of that said fighter while i'm talking so you could get to know that fighter a little bit if that's the true indeed the direction he's going in but first if you're new here thank you for stopping in please consider subscribing and if you're a current subscriber thank you for helping out the community that i'm trying to build out here it's a very small community but i'm trying to build it out so thank you very much for being part of that journey now rick laser i just reported on x that unlike the wild reports that's been going around again People trying to be first. They tried it with Tank versus Valenzuela, which is not happening. And now it looks like it might be Roach. But again, now now, now all of a sudden it turned into, um, oh, what's that kid's name that just that just literally fought um, uh, the executioner, Shakur Stevenson. <laughs> is that the executioner they're calling him? I forgot what they're calling him. Turk al -Ashik. But in any event, so now you see. The landscape's always changing. People are trying to be first to report it. Now, Rick Glacier is saying, and it could be the same thing with Rick Glacier, right? But this makes more sense, and I'm going to tell you why. Rick Glacier is reporting that Jesse Hart is the one that's going to be actually fighting David Benavidez next. Now, Jesse Hart is 35 years old. He's been at light heavyweight for a while. I think probably almost his whole career. Has three losses. Never been knocked out. He has lost twice to Surdo Ramirez, and he's lost one to Joe, Joe Smith Jr., all three losses to those two men have come to a very close decision, one or two rounds differences, so he hasn't been blown out in any of his losses. The problem is he's 35 years old. Um, usually that's the tail end of someone's career, unless there's extra special. He's not really known for putting guys away or anything like that. Like he's, not, he's not a KO artist. And while David Morrell is the fight that we, we should have seen at 168, at 175, I'm going to tell you why it's a good move on David Benavides' part not to go the David Morrell route, where one is the last fight he had. In the last fight he had, we found out that maybe light heavyweight might be his ceiling, and they might have to rethink some things and retool some things, right? You can't retool and fix things against Morrell. Morrell is probably going to come in with a chip on his shoulder is going to try to knock you out. He's, he's, a, he's a quality, quality, quality prospect. And to take him in your second bout at light heavyweight after you just experienced, you know, your former sparring partner taking you to task in a new weight class might not be the smartest idea. So what do you do? Well, you pick somebody who can present a slight challenge and doesn't have a bad record and, and has never been blown out in a fight and has had some good opposition even in losses, although those have been his losses. Um want to work through those mistakes or through those things like what went wrong the first fight what can we work on what 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 is it at light heavyweight that we can't get right at like we do at 168 you know so if you go into what i mean the only other option would have been if you would have got a dimitri bivol uh bivol or a better bf fight right away and then of course whatever happens happens which has a big bag but that fight is not happening for him right now because you got the Bivol Better Be a fight coming up. And it's good because now he's going to try to get these, these, his tools sharp at 175. Given the outcome of this Better Be a Bivol fight, once they unify, they might have an immediate rematch depending on what happens, right? If it's a close, exciting fight, they don't have a rematch. So realistically, for a whole year, he might not get a shot at any title other than like, like interims and things like that. So... Work at your craft while you wait for your shot. Unfortunately, this is David Morrell. I mean, uh, David Benavidez, like life sentence, right? For boxing, he's always waiting around for a shot. He never gets it right away um, with the top guys. Unfortunately, he tried to get the Canelo fight 168. That wasn't happening. He's trying to get it here at 175. He probably won't get it unless, like I said, Bivol or better be if gets steamrolled and no one exercises the, the, the rematch clause. And then you have... Benavidez versus said winner, but not after Jesse Hart. So I think it's the right move to do. You don't want to go in there at 175 when you just found out that you might not be that monster at 175 or you were on 168. So you want to want to work on those things and strategies and change the game up a little bit to kind of fit that new weight, right? And see what you got and try to work at it. Because I'm telling you, if you were to come with David Morrell, Morrell just, he's, like I said, he, I'm not saying Morrell beats him, but I'm saying it will be extremely, extremely risky with a guy like Morrell who can pop, who can move, who can jab, and is going to give you hell 
and you just struggle with your sparring partner. So at the end, that's what I'm saying. I think it's the right move for his team while they wait for the better BF Bivol thing to kind of sort itself out and see what the landscape of the light heavyweight division looks like and then go ahead and say this is the next move going forward. Hell, he might have to move back down to 168 after Jesse Hart. I mean, Jesse Hart might give him some problems. And if Jesse Hart gives Benavidez problems, he will want no part of Bivol. He's going to want no part of Benavidez. I mean, of better BF, and he's going to want to move down. To 168. The problem moving down. Now, he's still young enough to do so. So, it might not be a big deal. But sometimes when fighters move back down after moving up, it ages them quicker. And their punch resistance seems to go down as their body's now used to being at a higher weight class. CNS is early at 175. I don't think it should be a big deal. But they might find out after Jesse Hart if that's a true indeed the true opponent and not David Moreau, which I hope is not, that if Jesse Hart gives him problems, they're going to have to want to move back down because you can't keep moving up because nothing is going to get better at Cruiser. It's just going to get worse and worse and worse as you keep going up. So that's what I think. I think you go into Jesse Hart and Bealey, then you move into, you know, um, uh, not in Bealey, I'm sorry. Um, who's that other guy? I'm thinking of another person. But anyway, you want to move up. You want to kind of just keep sharpening your tools. And if he steamrolls Jesse Hart, then we say, okay, maybe he's getting acclimated. And then whatever happens with Bivol and Better Biv, if that's the next fight, the winner of that, then we whatever happens there, happens there. But let me know comes down the middle. What do you think? Do you think that Jesse Hart should be the right move? Or do you think David Morel should be the next move? Do you think this is the right thing to do? Just kind of stay in business to see what the Bivol, Better Biv fight is. Because I mean, if you can't get Canelo, Better Biv or Bivol is the fight you want to see, right? So let me know the comments down below. What do you want? What do you think? And until the next video, I'm out. Peace.